who goes? <clears throat> the firstborns or the first fruits. What harvest are they a part of? Well, they're the old. They're the old that goes before the new. You see, spring wheat is called new wheat and winter wheat is called old wheat. Is it because it's old and, and going bad? No, it's because it's old and it was planted late fall, so it had taken root well before the time of Passover. So do you know what happens? When winter wheat is harvested in late, late spring to early summer, it's used right away. There's no delay in it. It can be used right away. Do you know what happens with spring wheat? And you'll understand that if you, when you go watch the video. Spring wheat is planted in the spring. It's not harvested <coughs> excuse me, until very late summer, early fall. And when it's harvested, remember we did a teaching with the uh, Kadosh and Yoshan. I, I always mix up which one it is. But the one of them means you can't use it. So even though it's harvested in, in late summer to early fall, it cannot be used until the second day <coughs> excuse me, of Passover the following year. Well, isn't that interesting? That's the spring wheat. <clears throat> that is the rapture group. They are both wheats. One is a winter wheat, one is a spring wheat. The pre-trib is the winter wheat. The mid-trib at the rapture in the seventh year of seals is the spring wheat. You see, this is why when the rapture, when the end of the first six years happens and the rapture is going to take place, they don't yet know where they're going. And what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to bury bones, right? The, the whole thing about burying bones in Israel and it'll be seven months. Hello. It's approximately seven months. <clears throat> from when the rapture time would take place to when it would be observed. And isn't it fitting? Check this out. For those of you who haven't seen this before, isn't it fitting that in Revelation chapter 7, where the great multitude rapture takes place, which was after the sixth seal and before the seventh, chapter 7 of Revelation ends with verse 17. See, isn't God amazing? Isn't it amazing these little clues that he's got in there for us everywhere? Well, we're going to go a little bit further with this on something we haven't shared in a little bit because there's something else that happens with winter wheat. Not all winter wheat is what's called a cash crop. Okay? Not all winter wheat is a cash crop. Okay? <laughs> a cash crop, that means it's for profit, right? For the Lord to get what? His wages, right? This is the Lord getting the, the first fruits going. But do you know that winter wheat is generally, for the most part, grown as a cash crop? But do you know what else it's used for? It's used as a cover crop. We haven't talked about this in a little while. You see, the majority of people are going pre-trib as a cash crop, right? The prophets to the Lord. But there's a remnant who's being prepared in the revelation. Who is being prepared in the revelation that when the Lord comes to complete it, they won't be wondering, oh, why didn't I go? <clears throat> why didn't I go? Why didn't I go? They already understand. They're a remnant group of that wheat that is chosen to remain. And do you know what happens with cover crop? Cover crop isn't cut down and used as the cash being sold, you see? Do you know what happens? It gets cut down and it covers, it, it gets destroyed, cut down and left in the field so that it brings more nutrients to the next crop. Hello. Hello. Do you think that sounds familiar? <clears throat> Do you think it's interesting that it's the winter wheat that has both, of which the majority is a cash crop, but in some cases they use 
the rest for cover crop so that the next round will be more plenty, more plentiful? Do you know why? Let me show you precisely what that means. Watch this. <clears throat> John chapter 12. And you're going to see, this is also still going to bring about the revelation of the understanding of it. Uh, let me see, where is it? Oh, we can read it right from here. Check this out. <clears throat> this is in John chapter 12, starting in verse 23. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should, should be glorified. Listen to this, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. <clears throat> he that loothest, lo loveth his life shall lose it, but he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. What are these guys going to be a part of? Eternal life. What are they going to be willing to do? Give up their life. Except a kernel of wheat, a corn of wheat, should die, should fall to the ground and die. You mean like a group of winter wheat who are chosen as symbolic cover crop? This, this is them right here being spoken about. This is them. What do they get for it? Eternal life. Do you know that this group being trained up, this group being prepared, that in the end, you know, they take part in the first resurrection and we know that they're called priests of the Lord, right? They're going to rule and reign with them as priests. So they're probably a typology and representation of priests already. They're going to have eternal life. They're going to be the ones that take place in the first resurrection. Do you know why this is interesting? Because if you've been around here for a little while, you know we have what, what's called chapters to years. These books that have revealed themselves to us, that have events within their chapters that relates to years and the events within them in the is to come. Look at what we got here. The law of Moses, right? Genesis, Exodus. We've got some prophets. We got some prophets and we got Psalms. We got the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. And so this is what you see. See with, with Hosea and Ezekiel. I mean Hosea and, and Zechariah, but Ezekiel as well. We got some prophets here where their individual stories reveal us prophecy of the end of days. But then we can go throughout the, the the entirety of it and go from one to the other to the other to the other and connect these stories together to show the picture of the revelation within them, hidden within the books, within the prophets, within the law for the is to come. 